Women in history are so quickly forgotten. Um, and sometimes even when they're there, they're not seen. The Hello Girls. At first, the United States wanted to remain neutral in World War I. However, that proved difficult when Germany declared unrestricted submarine warfare in the waters around Great Britain, meaning that any boat going to Britain would be attacked. Because Germany killed 128 Americans on the Lusitania, a British ship, in 1915, the American public perspective shifted to favor joining the Allies' side. Many Americans, men and women, wanted to defend their country. With the Zimmerman telegram, a German ploy to start a war between Mexico and the United States, and many sunken boats, the Americans had enough of Germany's antics, and on April 6, 1917, the United States officially joined the brutal war. During World War I, telegrams were an important type of communication. However, they were also a relatively new source of communication, and not everyone knew how to use them. Most of the men were monolingual, and it took them about 60 seconds to connect the phones. In response, General Pershing wrote to the War Department requesting women who were bilingual and had training to be dispatched to France. His letter enabled the search for women operators. Because of their training at the Bell Telephone Company, later to become AT&T, the women who were found proved to be better operators than men, connecting calls in just 10 seconds. These women would later be known as the Hello Girls. Throughout World War I, the Hello Girls proved to be a vital force, changing the perception of women in the eyes of their military male peers and eventually at home when they fought for recognition for their role in the war. Due to the Hello Girls' education and qualification prior to World War I, they joined the war and their skills helped the Allies overcome the Central Powers. Before the Hello Girls, the Army had never accepted women into their ranks. World War I called for desperate measures because French women and American men could not deliver messages fast enough with the telegraphs. However, Pershing knew there were American women who knew specifically how to work telegraphs without missing any codes or orders. Every call came through an operator because telephones then did not have dials. Um, they had, there, there was no way that you could connect other than actually talking to an operator. And the, so the woman who is that pivot in the entire military communication machine, every communication, every command to fire, to retreat, to you know, take off from the airfield, all of those commands go through a woman. When General Pershing decided the Army needed American women telegraph workers, he ignored the stereotypical view that women should not participate in warfare, and he understood that they could do the job well. To the surprise of many, women were willing to step up and defend their country when recruited. At a time when women were advocating for equality, it empowered women to join the army rather than sit home helplessly. When 223 women were chosen, those women gave hope and inspiration to the women back in America, and they served as proof that with education and training, women could be more than housewives. With the Hello Girls training, communication could be efficient and accurate. In order to get messages across, they answered calls from one unit and connected them to another unit. Enabled by the Hello Girls, troops could talk to each other easily to warn each other, share battle strategy, or send help. Not only did they get messages across fast, but their feminine voices gave soldiers hope and memories of home. The comforting sound of their voices eased the pain of battle and assured the men that they could keep fighting. Each call made possible by a Hello Girl helped men persevere through fighting and win battles. During the deadly battle of Chateau Terry in France, July 1918, one Hello Girl received a call for help from U.S. soldiers trapped under fire from the Germans. In order to help, she connected those soldiers to the United States ally France, who sent help in two minutes. Even though they were not directly fighting, the Hello Girls helped win that battle of the war by getting help without any panic or delay. The woman's bravery was soon tested again a few months later at the Meuse-Argonne Offensive. Even though they were within the line of battle, near the German artillery range, with their barracks on fire, the women continued connecting calls until they were forced out. By staying and connecting calls until the last minute, the Hello Girls proved that they were not scared or weak, but instead that they could face the enemy without flinching. These women did not let their country down, and they proved that they were not housewives or objects of affection, but instead that they were capable of so much more. With their war efforts, the Hello Girls changed the perception of women during their overseas deployment. 
When the army first started recruiting women, advertisements were offensive and clearly portrayed the sexist and feminine assumptions and opinions the public made of women. One advertisement in the Lakita Herald suggested that women would be more likely to get married and find a husband when they joined the army. People believed that finding a husband was a priority on all women's lists and an irresistible offer. Because of the deep-rooted ideology that men were more capable, people could not comprehend that women wanted more than a family and could engage in dangerous situations like the Mures Argonne Offensive to protect their country. However, once women joined the army, they proved everyone wrong. Berth Hunt wrote in her diary that at first the men did not know how to react or treat the women and how they were also surprised to hear women on the phone. Chief Operator Grace Banker, another Hello Girl, also noted in her diary that the men challenged the legitimacy of the Hello Girls and their leadership whenever they could. To prevent men from accusing her of being unorganized, she made sure that all the Hello Girls looked neat in their uniforms so they would not stand out. Despite all of these changes, the women proved themselves to be worthy enough to be soldiers. They did not comply to the pressures their peers imposed on them, but instead they rose to their challenges. Seeing their valiant efforts in the war, the newspaper, The Sun, described the women as tough and resilient, rather than focusing on their appearance or ambition to get married. Nobody realized that the women were so close to the fighting and how they could handle the warfare like the men. The women changed the perception of themselves by showing that they, like men, are capable of participating in war. After being discharged from the war, the Hello Girls returned home to traditional mindsets that they had to fight relentlessly to gain the recognition they deserved. Although the women were recruited as switchboard soldiers, took the army oath, and were required to wear uniforms, sadly, when they returned home, they were dismissed as civilian employees, not soldiers. In the eyes of the media, they were heroes, but overall, they were unrecognized. They were denied status and benefits. They did not even receive the World War I Victory Medal, which was given to everyone who served in the U.S. military during World War I. They were proud of their role during the war, and they could not accept that their efforts during the war would be forgotten. They constantly wrote to each president from Roosevelt to Carter, hoping that one of them would recognize their efforts. When Meryl Egan Anderson, one of the Hello Girls, returned from war, she found out that she did not get any of the military benefits. Her husband wrote a letter to the War Department asking for her victory medal. However, they responded by saying she was never actually in the Army. Not being satisfied with their answer, she asked Congress over 50 times for acknowledgement for the Hello Girls war efforts and fought for over 50 years to get veteran status. Due to the old-fashioned mindset of the Army, Anderson focused her post-military life fighting for what she believed in. She did not stop, even though the government told her many times that she would never be recognized. Finally, in 1977, Congress passed a bill presented by Senators John Tester and Dean Heller that would give the Hello Girls veteran status and award them the Congressional Gold Medal. Even with this success, underlying biases about women are seen through the media's lack of coverage on the Hello Girls. Despite the lack of attention, the Hello Girls still changed the tides for many women in the military and opened up new opportunities with this bill. Through the Hello Girls' impressive skills with telegrams, they helped win World War I, changed the mindsets of their peers in the military overseas, and after they got home, fought for over 60 years for veteran status, paving the way for later women to join the military or work in male-dominated fields. Today, women continue to struggle in professions that are male-dominated, such as science or engineering. Women sometimes feel ostracized and overanalyzed in these fields because they stand out. Similarly, the Hello Girls notice a pressure from their male peers to prove themselves. Today, only 20% of women serve in the military. However, it is one of the fastest-growing demographics because of those Hello Girls. Because of the Hello Girls' constant pressure and perseverance to gain equality, they broke down the barriers that prevented women from getting recognition in the military and ultimately opened up doors for the generations to come. Mm -hmm.